To continue walking through Object Explorer at the database level, I'm going to open the OBX Kites database. Every database has the same hierarchy tree of objects and the same available properties. I'm opening the OBX Kites database because it has some store procedures and triggers, so we have objects there to see once we get down to that point. When a database is selected, just like a server, there are a number of reports available. And the summary page only shows reports for the server or the database. Also, at the database level, just like at the server, there's properties. The general page shows information like the last backup, the number of users, size and space available, and again, there's collation, which can either bite you or make life easy, depending upon whether or not it's set the way you want it to be set. In the files page, you can see every file being used by the database, both data files and log files, and which file group they're on, their initial size and whether or not they're set for automatic growth and any restriction to growth. And file groups are defined in the file group page. The reason to have file groups is so that you can take a data file and spread it across multiple disk subsystems, assigning each disk subsystem to a different file group. In the option page, you can set the collation, set the recovery model. The recovery model can be set to full, bulk logged, or simple. A whole hour could be spent discussing recovery model, backup, and recovery processes, but to give you a quick description of it, it has to do with how the transaction log does right ahead work for all the transactions. In full recovery model, the transaction log will record every transaction and it will just fill up that transaction log until you do a backup of the transaction log. It's the full complete way of working with SQL Server for absolute durability of every transaction. Bulk logged will allow you to do bulk logged operations such as a bulk insert, which normally bypass the transaction log. Because they bypass the transaction log, if you were on full recovery model, you would have to restart your backup process as far as doing a full backup and then doing more transaction log backups. But bulk logged allows you to do bulk insert type operations, which bypass the transaction log, and then they take the full bulk logged operation and write that to the transaction log as well. So you can continue just doing the transaction log backups as you normally would. So it's a good compromise between having a full backup and still allowing you to have bulk operations. The simple recovery model keeps the transaction log from growing, holding every transaction until there's a transaction log backup. So periodically it will truncate the transaction log and keep it small meaning that you can only do the regular database backups. You don't have to worry about transaction log backups. And it's okay for some databases. The compatibility level of the database sets the syntax and the features that are available for programming the database. For SQL Server 2005, you want that to be on 9.0. A misconception is that setting the compatibility level changes actually how the optimizer works. It's the same optimizer, same indexes, same engine, you're running SQL Server 2005, you would only set it back to a compatibility level of 8.0 or 7.0 if you wanted to move databases into SQL Server 2005, but you did not want to upgrade or change any of your syntax. From my experience, the upgrade process from 2000 to 2005 is very smooth, and almost without a hitch, all of my code ran fine. The permissions page is used to set security. The two key terms inside of SQL Server you'll see for security the first one is principal, which means a user or a role who can have permission to an object. The second key term is a securable, and a securable is an object that can be secured, and a principal can have permissions to a securable. And here's where you would set that inside of the database. Extended properties are for additional properties you create yourself. Database mirroring is new in SQL Server 2005, and depending upon your configuration, can have one database mirrored to a second server, or one database mirrored to a second server with a third server witnessing and checking up on which one is working at the current time. The nice thing about mirroring is that it is high performance, and the client can automatically switch over from the principal to the mirror in case of a failover. Because every transaction is recorded in the transaction log, Whenever you do a transaction log backup, which is typically done every 5 to 15 minutes, that transaction log backup could be shipped or sent to another server and applied. This would create a warm backup server, meaning that if the primary went down, you could go over to the backup server, 
recover that backup server, bring it up online, and you would have every transaction up to the last time of the transaction log shipping. So you may lose 5 to 15 minutes. Log shipping is a popular availability method because it's easy to set up and maintain. Transaction log shipping is also often used to keep a reporting server almost up to date so that you have a second server that is used only for reporting. In the next lesson, we're going to walk through database diagrams as we talk about relational database modeling.